Wired. Unplugged. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wired Unplugged, episode 27. Um, first one, Aaron, me and you have been like ships been a while, in the night yeah. for about I a month. Nothing. I feel like this is that scene in Annie. Do you know where they have the lockets and then they get reunited? It's uh, that's good. It's like That's that a, moment. an yeah, Annie yeah, yeah. reference to start the show. What a strong intro. Well done, mate. Uh, we are, we've got a special <laughs> episode, this one, because we're joined by Gabrielle Hibbert. That's a Yay! clap noise. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, he seems very surprised by the intro jingle when it was playing. It was like, whoa, there's a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a jingle going on. Yeah, I was just, enjo- I was just enjoying it. Some people think it's that it's cool. putting in post, and then it does shock them. And it sometimes can be quite loud too. But it's just for like the ear shredding, face melting, heavy metal aspect of it and stuff like that. You see, so, um, so yeah, wow, the gang's all here, and this is an episode where we've got a guest the whole way through. Sometimes, Gabriel, we just kind of box our guests in a little interview segment. But you've got free roam of the place for the next hour, so you can get involved in yeah, all of it. Yeah, I'm obviously not busy enough. I'm not busy enough, so I've got, I've got all the time in the world for oh. you. Well, we've got a lot to talk about. Uh, we'll go through the, the Gabriel origin story, um, and we'll we'll talk a little bit about what you do and your expertise, not to sound too LinkedIn about it. But um, I'd like to basically, in fact, you know what? I reckon we do that first. I we'll think a, so. We'll a little chat. Let's, let's introduce the world to you, Gabrielle. Uh, in your own words, who are you and what you're about? Oh, God, what a big question. And it's always that question that, like, in a call, you're like, oh, no, I have to answer it. But all right, yeah. go on then. Um, so, yeah, I'm Gabrielle. Yeah. I uh, work in PR for Renaissance PR. Um, yeah, I've been doing that for a few years now. I bloody love it. I love my what else? I don't, where do I go? It's a difficult one as well because we're all British, so that means that we find everything embarrassing, isn't it? Like introducing <laughs> ourselves and yeah. all of that. Hi everyone, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Aaron. Nice to meet you. My favourite colour is blue. <laughs> if we ask our American guests, they just like jump straight in and they, they yeah, love yeah, it, yeah. don't they? Here um, are my credentials. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so you know, I, we've we've. Well, we had Gareth on recently. I, I didn't know. Um, so you're my first PR guest. So I'm going to spend the entire rest of the podcast pretending I don't know what PR is and stuff like that. But we can talk a little bit about video games PR, which is a lot of the time known as the dark art, really, um, because no one knows how to do it. And you can kind of tell everyone exactly how to do it, but people still don't know how to do it or, or what it is, really. So um, maybe we can talk a little bit about that. Um, and yeah, I guess it's a... A nice mix of what you you what do you love about it? The fact that the communications aspect and you love games or what? So I like to think of PR as basically being a cheerleader. Um, so my job is being a cheerleader for video games, which as a medium I think just blows my mind. I have no idea how any creators developers do any of what they do. I think it's so amazing, and I literally get to clown about being the British I'm going to undersell myself get I get to clown about just talking about all this amazing stuff to people who are already interested in video games and I just have to tell them about something new they might not have heard of before and if they have heard of it before then brilliant I get to like wax lyrical with someone who knows what I'm talking about and can sort of get on that excited vibe level as well um mm. but when my the best is when my parents ask Gabra what is it you actually do like I just talk to I talk to journalists about video games. And my favourite is when my dad goes, "But do enough people actually play video games?" I'm like <laughs> I don't play any. Do, do enough people actually play them? Like Dad, I, I promise you, it pays the mortgage. Yeah, like my my, it, my yeah, it's fine. It's, it's, <laughs> it, it, really, it really is a thing. It's not a fad. <laughs> this isn't a phase. <laughs> you know that that yeah. It's it's like that. I don't think um I like parent wise i think my dad i i did i did the pr for the baftas and my dad thinks that i've won a bafta my dad thinks that i've won a bafta <laughs> for making video games oh, and no, I've told you just can't burst that bubble exactly and he tells all of his friends at work that, that, oh, I, no. that, that his, his, he think my dad thinks that i make video games and i've won a bafta making video games yep i i have i have people in my family um who it's quite hard to tell them what i do for a living so they just say oh yeah he's you know he he, he makes games and i'm like oh. yeah yeah that's it <laughs> I don't. yeah that's it yeah. you know the, he makes those marios 
You know, yeah. that's what it is. Yeah. Something about <laughs> Zelda. <laughs> yeah. how's, how's Shigeru doing this week? I don't know, Miyamoto. Oh. I, uh, <laughs> yeah. Let's catch yeah. up for a drink of him. Yeah, why not? No, I don't do that, no, unfortunately. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, working in PR, uh, like I say, no one knows what we do, but especially our parents. I think that's the, the key takeaway. So, Gabrielle, we'll, we'll delve a little bit more into the sort of the expertise, the, the, the PR will, we'll, you know, unveil it all, I suppose, a little bit later on. But I think what... Oh. oh, that was a good magic trick. That was the true that, dark that art of PR. Yeah. That just happened. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shazam. Um, Gab- <laughs> we'll speak to Gabrielle in a little bit more detail in just a few moments. However, there's a very, very tried and true um, part of the podcast that we whip out the very beginning. It's called the Propaganda Segment. And now that my true minister of propaganda, Aaron Cooper's back with me. It's me. Let's burst in to see what why because you know, why is that a bit of a busy week, you know? Launching a video game and that. It's, it's all going on. It's all, all right. going on. Let's find out a little bit more about it. Let's go. Wired propaganda. Wow. Well here we are in a wired propaganda segment of this week's podcast. And like I say, probably the biggest amount of news uh in Wired Unplugged history because the, there was a humongous FOMO-inducing launch party that I saw on the internet <laughs> this week whilst I was COVID-ridden going, God, I wish that was me. Um, <laughs> and let, let, let it be known, I was invited with the greatest honours, but unfortunately yep. I was too plagued. So uh, what happened in the week uh, of, of Wired propaganda this week, Aaron, and what have we got on the way? So... We launched a flipping video game. Uh, you, you've already mentioned exactly what I was going to say, but Arcade Paradise <laughs> is now out. <laughs> Everyone can play it on all formats, including PC, including so Switch, Xbox. It's fine. Just spoil it. It's fine. It's fine. No one needs me to talk. Carry on. Continue, Jake. Go on. Carry on. That's I, what... I, I, it's, <laughs> the, it's the bitterness of the FOMO. That's what it was, man. You know? <laughs> no, do, I, I will remedy your FOMO, though. This, yeah. isn't, this isn't in the notes. But did you know that you are included in the credits of Arcade Paradise as a special thanks? I'm actually buzzing, you know. Yeah, I did see that. Yeah. I, I've been yeah, having yeah, a spin yeah. of it, and I was like, I'll have a look at the credits, and that's see, see me, mate. I'm in yeah. there. Yeah. There you are, sweet name. And I was like, there he is. There he is. Well deserved. Thank you. Um, but you, you were invited with special honors. I believe you were going to get on stage and like do a guitar riff or something, just a little solo um, and just wow everyone. Just yeah. casually wow everyone. But since you weren't there, um, we. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Hello, Gabrielle. Yeah. Gabrielle is, cut, for the audio listeners who are maybe unaware, Gabrielle is cutting in and out of this podcast like she's just entering different material planes of existence. Yeah, it's like the multiverse, right? She's being sent into the shadow realm yeah. and back out. It's like Yu-Gi-Oh or something. Isn't it? <laughs> um, He's the blue eyes white dragon card, quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, got again. Oh, this is great. It's like ping pong of connection. It's great. <laughs> you there, Gabrielle? Hello. I think I am. <laughs> <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> I think I'm here. Um, but yes, we launched a video game. RK Paradise <laughs> is out. Jake is in the credits. <laughs> Jake is in the credits. But not only did we launch a video game, which everyone can play right now, which is getting amazing reviews, amazing content creative doing stuff, and it's yeah. going amazingly well, um, which is a testament to the work that Dre and the folks at Nosebleed have done. Um, but boy, did we launch it in a way. As Jake mentioned uh, loosely, um, due to FOMO, we had an amazing launch party for the game uh, in London, in London, and it was a venue that was packed, full of arcade machines. There was live music from people who'd done the soundtrack of the game, who did a really cool uh, Rage Against the Machine cover as well. Yeah. Um, uh, <clears throat> and also, um, last week's episode was the Sam Clay special, uh, where he had uh, Dre on and um, and Kieran Pepper as well. Um, just to talk about mm-hmm. the game, the music, and so on. Um, so you didn't get to see our faces, but we were there. Besides Jake, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Jake wasn't there, yeah. um, but we were. Um, but it was it was a good time, and um, like enough praise can't be put towards um, Ant. So Ant, who works at Wired, uh, he's he's a new recruit. He's been uh, in the company for about three months, I think. So it just passes a probation because the event went well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he yeah. he put so much 
effort into the detail and nuance of, of decking out the show. There was one thing that I know he wasn't happy with, and that was uh, originally uh, there was going to be mm-hmm. um, washing machines as well. There's going to be washing machines, so it's going to be like yeah. a laundrette arcade. Um, but unfortunately, the people, the laundrette people, or whoever is getting washing machines off, let him down the day before <laughs> the venue was meant to be set up. No. So it, it turned out just being an arcade paradise. But what he did uh, to bring the, the laundrette uh, <laughs> element to it was uh, there were washing lines hung up with... Uh, different pieces of clothing and some washing. Uh, some washing. Yeah. There was washing. There was washing hung out. Yeah, it was great. Um, but it was it was a great time. I think what there was um, two hundred and fifty people there. Yeah, yeah. it was it was li- it was literally all consuming on that day. My time. Yeah. and I was like full of people. I was like, oh, they're the well, you know, like everyone was there. Everyone who yeah. mattered was there, basically. Yeah, it was great. Um, um, yeah, but you would have been. You would have been if 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 circumstances were different. Oh, yeah. You were there in spirit. Exactly. And the you were there in spirit. Yeah. You were there in spirit and in the credits. Um, Gabrielle's gone again for the uh, for the viewers out there. Do you know what's weird? Listeners. Yeah, hang on a minute, Aaron. Yeah, every time we mention the word spirit as well, it's spirit. The... Why should get spirited away? Yeah. What well, great film Isn't as that well. Odd that that's actually happening though. <laughs> That is, yeah. That is. All right, should have a, a spirit counter. A spirit counter <laughs> just come up on screen. Yeah. Disconnection. Disconnection. Yeah. yeah. Um, Ooh. Curtis, um, we're so sorry. Curtis, the video editor. Woo. Ah, uh, speaking of which, he, he best not edit this out. I got to meet Curtis for the first time in person oh, yeah. at the event, um, and uh, I I had to do unspeakable things just so that he would not. Um, edit me incorrectly in this podcast going forward. He said, I can reduce your talk time down to nothing. And I was like, you can. He holds all the cards, doesn't he? Because we also also had a conversation as well. It's like, I'm not naming names, but someone talks a lot. And I was like, yeah, it's me. And it... uh... (laughs) It's like if it, okay. uh, fine, fine. I'm what just going to keep things very basic from now on. So one word's all the way now. So Jake, what, what have you got a question for me? Uh, yeah, did you enjoy the party? All right, <laughs> very good. So look, congratulations <laughs> to the whole Arcade Paradise lot, and congratulations to the Wild lot on an amazing event. It seemed to be an absolute stormer. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it was incredible, incredible fun, and it's been a while since there has been. Um, it felt good to be at a proper launch party again that was of that mass. Um, speaking of parties, speaking of parties, and this isn't in here, but obviously we have to say a massive congratulations to the um, the outside Xbox team. Mm-hmm. The outside Xbox team yeah. who, as of this night of recording, are hosting uh, yeah. Fortnite. Um, they're, they're hosting a party in London as well um, to celebrate 10 years of, of them being uh, a video entity. And I can't believe that it has been 10 years. It's yeah. it's absolute madness. And so for those who don't know outside uh, Xbox or whatever, um, you know, they've, they're kind of, a, I guess you'd describe them as like a magazine style channel on YouTube, yeah. right? A variety of different um, content, you know, and they've been going for 10 years and, and they've got an incredible repertoire. They've got an incredible yeah. amount of, of content on there. They even do a D and D campaign, which does yeah. super well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I think uh, the the interesting thing um, about them as well is you know, so uh, Andy Farrant, um, he, he used to be a part of um, oh, what was it called? Was it was it the original? Not Xbox on. What were they called? Was it like it wasn't inside Xbox. Do you it was inside Xbox, inside Xbox, and yeah. they used to do their weekly show that would be on the Xbox 360, the 360. dashboard. Yeah, called "Sent You a Message." What yeah. a great show! What yeah. a great show! Yeah, um, which was incredible and a lot of fun. And then this was kind of the offshoot, the the, the resurgence after you know the the, yeah. the, comp- the Xbox changed and and you know relationships developed in different ways and they went out and set up their their own thing so we have to say a massive congratulations for 10 years for them um and i'm gonna segue mm-hmm. i'm gonna segue i'm gonna segue nicely into the next point of propaganda okay. since gabrielle has returned we can't say the s word because that is when gabrielle disappears yeah. um but um the rk paradise party doubled up as a secret event on the side as well so as we know, Gamescom is coming up. Um, so Wired held a very secretive side event, which was for uh, press ahead of Gamescom, a pre-Gamescom shindig, where they could get hands on some of the titles that are coming up at yeah. Gamescom and so on. Um, and Gabrielle was there in uh, in full-fledged uh, PR capacity. 
and it just goes back to what uh, Gabrielle said earlier as well. Um, you know, that she, <laughs> the thing she enjoys is being able to wax lyrical about people that enjoy the passion of games and so on. Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of these developers she had met for the first time at the event, um, and th- there was quite a few of them. And then even before the party started, they were best friends. They were best friends, and that's that's true PR magic. <laughs> yes. that, that I, I think she's PR been invited magic. to like a, a christening of a child, and you know, <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm a yeah. godparent. Yeah, she's godparent already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's but, but but to say that the the segue is uh, Gamescom. Gamescom is happening, and there are going to be a lot of really cool new things shown for games that you may already know about. Um, there's going to be some participation in exclusive shows which i can't spoil um but there are also going to be maybe maybe some new things you never know brand brand new things i couldn't really get out of my head when you said that there was like a secret like secret side secret side hustle do you know like in like breaking bad where like they have that laundromat and then underneath it there's that giant lab it's an arcade oh the lab yeah (laughs) yeah sorry Yeah, it's a, it was exactly it was exactly it was exactly like that. To be Be-hand, honest, behind one of the things there was a secret that was sort of like PR room, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That. That's like, that's exactly what it was. It was like secret offshoot. Yeah. Well, uh, so it was like roads... secret messages. If you just go through there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's codes in the washing. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So <laughs> Gamescom is fast approaching, and there's a why, why they're there, right? Yeah. Well, so much going on, so many cool things to see, new updates on games, and a few surprises here and there, but. But the most important part is that obviously Gamescom takes place when we would usually record Wide and Plug. But we're going to meet up. We're going to meet up at the show and do this in person, aren't we, Jake? We certainly it's are. It's going to be exciting. Certainly... And, and even better is not only are we going to have lots of developers there that we can pick the minds of, which is exciting, yeah. but Leo, so the MD of Wired, has, has uh, sacrificed some of his time to join in this madness yeah. uh, for a special AMA. So you can honestly ask... The guy who runs Wired, any question you want. His favorite pasta dish, cool. His favorite metal band, fine. What is his favorite, favorite type of seance. So I, I think I know what it is. Yeah, go on. Just because I ate it with him once. Um, it's got an Italian name. So. Oh, <laughs> can't but say, it was, oh, it's some Italian shit. But it was like um, a, a dry white pasta dish. Yeah. But it's packed with flavor. Um, and we had that. Interestingly, actually, at the last Gamescom we had in person, what I want this really nice right. Italian place. Well, I, 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 I'm gonna, I'm gonna submit this question. Um, yeah, but Favorite if pasta. you wanted to submit another question to Leo, how could we do it? You could tweet the question at Wired P P for Productions P for Pasta uh, on Twitter P for Pasta Wired Pasta Yeah, yeah. Um, or you can email unplugged at wiredproductions.com uh, with your Tweeted email. <laughs> Well, I don't know. Well, this is mad. That's really it's mad. Good. Well, it's yeah. me to you. Incredible. So it's so a Gamescom Spesh, basically. Gamescom Spesh. A Gamescom yeah. Spesh with me and you, Leo Zulo, and a slew of special guests. Gabrielle uh, could technically pop in as well. Just pop ahead in. Literally pop in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Gabrielle, Who knows do you want to what's going to happen? Cameo? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'll so be- thank you very much. That's a decent amount of unplugged, actually, uh, so far. And propaganda-wise, we're... We're on track. We got Had a propaganda. Just, just a little, a, a little game launch, no big deal, and then the biggest yeah. gaming convention of the year next week. So we're sandwiched between, you know, the biggest things ever. We're in the eye of the storm right now. Um, oh yeah. Speaking of um, interference, Gabriel, welcome back. Uh, for the audio listeners who have got no context again, Gabrielle's been in and out of this podcast <laughs> like, like mad. She's really been persevering. She's really been trying, and I just want to commend you for that. She's just really busy. Just really busy with all the <laughs> yeah. PR. It's Popping like, out to answer a quick email. I've got a thing to send. Popping out to answer a quick email. So uh, we are now free reigning, able to talk about the wider world outside of Wired, which does exist despite the mass- massive amount of news on either side of us right now. So let me run the little jingle, and we'll we'll have a little look at what's going on in the world uh, but not like the boring world like finances the and cool world. That. the good the cool world. world yeah let's yeah, go yeah, yeah. news wait stop from google Ooh. that's the uh news you stole from google um gabriel have you heard any of these jingles before no 
Yeah. I think I have. Yeah. That's my favourite, sure. I think, out of all of them. Yeah, so I wanted to share that with promotes you. Promotes a bit of casual theft. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Casual theft. <laughs> that's why I like that uh, one. What I you want in your jingle. <laughs> the most punk rock out of all of them. Um, so, okay, Aaron brings to us every week uh, an array of news from all around the world. Um, to be honest, it's, there's Nintendo most weeks, but this one's like really crazy. This one is crazy. <laughs> there's so, some Nintendo in there. Don't yeah, I, I actually am I'm buzzing about this. So we'll, we'll break it down and, and let, let's, let's have a chat. So Aaron, what have we got this week? Well, my precious. <laughs> that, <laughs> that makes sense going. the moment. So, very exciting news. There is a brand new game being made set in the Lord of the Rings literary universe so you know from the books and so on um and this is something that take two and private division are going to publish but the really cool thing about this is that it is being made and developed with uh weta workshop so weta workshop for those who don't know one of my favorite things in life when things are down and i'm very very bored there is nothing better than whacking on the extended edition lord of the ring blu-rays and watching the extras the extras are better than the films I the films are great love this yes. the making ofs are absolutely incredible you get to see all these incredible people going through the creation process of x y and z all the artists all the people that have been involved in like uh, the tolkienites the people who've practiced and studied tolkien all their lives um, and, and you get to watch the, the creation process. So Weta Workshop, um, they are the, the effects studio. So they were the people that spent thousands and thousands of days making those individually linked pieces of chain mail um, and making all the armor, the swords, you know, so much so that they built their own forgery so they could make swords properly and so on in different ways for each of the, each of the, 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 what would you call them? The races within within yeah. the world. Yeah. Um, and they did the digital effects for the things. But they recently set up um, uh, a video game studio uh, as, as well as part of that. <clears throat> but they are going to be intimately involved in making a brand new video game based in the Lord of the Rings universe. Now, there's already one game that is on the horizon, and that is uh, Lord of the Rings Gollum. Mm -hmm. Um, which again is um, it's based on the literature, the literary world of, of Tolkien, as opposed to being a direct offshoot of the movies. But the movies themselves are, you know, from the literary universe as well. So hey ho! Um, but mm. to have Weta Workshop involved in a brand new experience could be very interesting. They have the connections, they know the historians, they have lived and breathed this world for so, so long. And I can't wait <laughs> to see what the game's about because I haven't announced really what it's about. Um, all we know is that it's happening and that it's going to be releasing in a Private Division's 2024 financial year. So we've still got a bit of time. A um, years, but what, what a great call. Uh, announcement. How, how how do we all feel about this? Are you excited as me? Are you excited about the Lord of the Rings uh, extended edition bonus features as me? I don't know. I... Um, <laughs> Seriously, I love them. Well, I love them. If, if 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 life is crap, whack them on, and it's just bliss. Well, Get grab a massive mug of tea. I have I have strong feelings about this, but I'd like to just uh, sort of move it over to you, Gabrielle, just so we can kind of gauge about this, because I don't want to, like, spend ages talking around about this, and you just really just don't give a shit about the Lord of the Rings, which, believe it or not, some people in this world, for some reason, do not care. Bless me. Yeah. Bless you for saying that. Um, Taurus, I'm just like, hey, like, enjoying how passionate Aaron is about it. I'm literally like, <laughs> tell me more. Like, you clearly love it so much. I just, like, yeah, just uh, Gabrielle, you, of love. Gabrielle, sorry to interrupt you. You missed this part, though. Um, I, I was saying to Jake, I met Curtis for the first time at the wide event, um, and he said, oh, one of you talk too much, and like looked at me and said, you know, probably shouldn't talk too much. So I, I did just disobey exactly what he said going on that tirade of love. We're, we're, we're at please. Curtis, the video editor's behest. So like, yeah. Aaron's like uses allocation of words now, so it's just me and you, Gabrielle, for the rest of it. So uh, if you... Oh, you say that. <laughs> <laughs> He's still there, Gabriel. Yeah, yeah. I feel I feel like uh, we're doing the, the the scores at Eurovision. No, <laughs> yeah, 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 it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah, Gabriel, can we, we have the scores, I, please? I, yeah, I don't know if you can still hear me, but um, I'll. It's uh, it's been um, quite a few years since the Lord of the Rings, and I still have mm. them on like a yearly rotation. I watch them at least once a year. Um, just to try and feel something, I um, 
I, I <laughs> just to try and feel something, I actually yeah. um, got in on um, the Hobbit movies on Netflix just to see if I could get anything out of that whatsoever. And oh, they the make me the feel is, something I, else. I still can't and don't care about them. Yeah, and I really, really wish that I did uh, slash could, but it, it's just something about it for me. It's just not. It doesn't hit the same way. And actually, a lot of my problems with it are down to the the CGI and like the way that things feel. And like Weta worked on that a little bit, but for the most part, it actually uh, there's, was... there's an interesting story behind that though, isn't there? Mm -hmm. Sorry, Curtis, so I'm about to go off on one. Um editor's notes. Uh <laughs> this is where Aaron rambles. Because originally um Gilmero del Toro was meant to be handling the Hobbit movies and it was originally meant to be two movies, not the three it ended up being. Um, and then there were there was scheduling issues and so on, but he he had worked with Weta and his own team for a long time building uh, building the world and and you know the, his own version of the story. Um, but then there were contractual issues and so on, and then that's when Peter Jackson had to step in at last minute and say these films are still going to be made. But it wasn't as you know for Lord of the Rings, they spent years and years and years and years planning every intricate little detail. Um, but then to make things interesting is like uh, it's going to be three films now, and one of those films is going to be like a bridge to Lord of the Rings, which was the most exciting one in my opinion. Um, but I, I think that is partly why there are issues with those films because I had the same thing now. Um, Jake, you know Ibs, you know Ibrahim. Everyone knows Ibrahim. Big, Great big guy. Yeah. We went to watch one of the Hobbit movies when it released. Um, I think we were at some show. We were doing something in the US. We are in New York or LA. I can't remember. And we had an extra day spare before we flew back. And yeah. one of the evenings we went to watch and I fell asleep. I fell asleep about 40 minutes in and woke up at the end. And I was like, oh, I think I was just, I think I was really tired. I flew home, went to go watch it again with my housemate, fell asleep 45 minutes in. <laughs> and I was just, it, it just sound, didn't hit it with me. It's really brutal to say this, but like that is like literally a meme that it's like, you know, cure for insomnia. Yeah. That is literally a meme. I, I, to be honest with you, yeah, the, the thing about the Lord of the Rings is it, it could be the best thing ever made. So like, mm. I, it's not that like I, you know, The Hobbit is crap or anything, but it's just not the best thing ever, is it? That's the problem with it. And, and... I also think if, if you look at the size of the source material, yeah. you know, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, the Lord of the Rings as a as a book, um, and then the Hobbit as a book. It's uh, you, you haven't stretched some things out there, aren't you? Yeah, exactly. Um, well, Gabrielle's had to go back to the spirit realm, like Sauron. <laughs> she's going to gather her strength in the east, and we'll bring her back. I'll do a little. I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll get through the news. You and I, Aaron. And then we'll do the interview segment and we can get Gabrielle and I'll magically record it tomorrow and we'll have Gabrielle with better internet. Now that Gabrielle's gone, I, I don't have to worry about what I'm about to say next, which is I fucking love the Lord of the Rings. So and I could talk. So good. We could do a spin off podcast about it. I'm, <laughs> I'm telling you right now, though, the, 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 the Weta Workshop team are like responsible for so much cool stuff. Like I love them. Um, that that new Blade Runner, uh, and yes, and, and they're responsible for loads of how that looks. Uh, I always find that fascinating. That where uh, a part of they it, they call it it's a silly name, but they call it bigatures. You know, like miniatures. Bigatures, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so I guess like if you're like a casual Lord of the Rings fan, all you need to kind of know is you know a lot of the Lord of the Rings that you see, Weta basically sculpted it. So the fact that even though it's not their like, I guess you wouldn't really call it their expertise, would you? But the fact that like. Uh, video games aren't really wet as expertise, right? But like, what they're going to be able to add to this project is probably going to be like priceless, isn't it? So yeah. that's really cool. I mean, that Gollum game looks decent, honestly, and like, I think that there's enough interest for Lord of the Rings that people would buy a game every year. I'm, I'm surprised actually that since, like, you know, when EA bought the rights to the Lord of the Rings games a long time ago, they didn't do more with the IP. I mean, they did the Shadow Sh of Mordor stuff. Shadow of Mordor? I didn't play the follow-up because it deviated a bit too much from what I wanted, but Shadow of Mordor as a game was excellent. Exa it was exa so exa good. Exactly the same. I was working on, I was a, a full-time YouTuber back then, and I got the, the whatever the Shadow of Mordor sequel was, and I kind of felt like it just had a bit too much stuff in it, and it was a yeah. bit overwhelming, right? But that first one, it was dead lean. Like you could do loads on it. I I, I really liked it. Like yeah, um, roaming around Mordor. It's yeah, great. It, it the, the, the nemesis system as well with the people you exactly. meet and don't kill and they escape. Yeah, and so it wasn't. Good. And you know, it was doing that lovely thing. If it wasn't trying to like tell the story of the 
the the Lord of the Rings or or whatever in terms of the you know the film and the the book stuff, which I think yeah. is what like what people didn't like about the Hobbit wasn't there. Why is Lego last in it and blah blah? Yeah. So like you, you yeah. get to learn a bit more about Celebrimbor. Celebrimbor. Yeah, Celebrimbor. Uh, <laughs> exactly. So do you yeah. know what? Actually, I'm I. Uh, I've had a very busy day today and yesterday, so I didn't even get a chance to look at the news. So, in fact, the, the news that we stole from, from Google this week, um, the news that you have brought me totally legally from Google... Legally. Uh, has, has, uh, ...is the only news that I've got gaming-wise this week. So this was like... I read it, and I was like, my eyes lit up. So thank you very much. Very romantic of me, I know, but amazing. So, yeah, really looking forward to that. And, uh, hey, Private Division, they're, like, fairly new, aren't they? They're Take-Two's, like... Put, like yeah. one of the subsidiaries they're, 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 like they're five years they're, old like yeah they're they're a, they're a subsidiary of take two um and you know that was that was set up by um i i believe it was like a mixture of take two and 2k employees that were, were relatively senior that wanted to do to take a bit of time to probably work on things that weren't um you know a lot of franchise stuff and and, and yeah. very big but really go back to you know because when Private Division first kicked off as well, they they very were very hand selective with the projects they took because they wanted to work with creators that had had really interesting games and saw yeah. success with them and then give them a platform to not do a sequel, but say, please make make something new that really excites you. Um, and it was kind of like an invitation to some of the the old guard of, of, of the game dev world to to have a pass and say, do do something what you think is creative with this technology as it is now, which yeah. is kind of nice. It's it's it really is, and so yeah, they've they've. Been, I actually, as of recording, they put out some game today called Roller Drome or whatever. Yes, so, the reviews that's, that's Roll Seven, right? That, yeah, and Private Division because they yeah Ollie, Ollie yeah, yeah. as well. So like yeah, you know they've got. What I'm trying to say is they've got they've got good sentiment. Everyone seems to like what they do. So now that they're doing a Lord of the Rings game, you know, with Weta Workshop, it seems like a nice thing. So. Great yeah. bit of news that love that love that. Um, this one sounds a little bit more tumultuous. Uh, uh, what have uh, we got? Well, um, starting from next week, there will be um, a new podcast called "The Lord and the King." Uh, that we are. <laughs> you can be the king because you came up with that. All right. We can just switch. I'll be Boromir. Boromir, you can be Aragorn. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, my king. That's, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. <laughs> I would have went to the end with you. Um... <laughs> <laughs> this is the most romantic uh, podcast we've done in ages. Oh, it's, it's beautiful. It's <laughs> good to be back. Um, no, but seriously, no, because this is serious. Sorry, there's a <laughs> change in tone. <laughs> um, yeah. right. Yesterday, yesterday, um, there was a, a fire at Nintendo headquarters in Japan. Um, now, similar to us, if if you listen or watch from the UK, you you know that recently we've been through quite a bit of a a Wait. period of heat. Yeah, yeah, um, and Japan has been the same. They're they're in the midst of like a fourteen fifteen day heat wave, and essentially what happened was, um, luckily the fire was put out quickly by the staff. Um, uh, and there was just like some minor fire damage uh, to like chairs and equipment. Um, but it, it reportedly uh, it stemmed from um, an electrical device that was charging because of the heat, because of the levels that uh, that the heat has been at there. So, um, you know, I like to get Nintendo in. Um, this has nothing to do with a game, but I just thought it was um, very interesting to know. But yeah, you know, nope. maybe don't keep your phones on charge overnight uh, well, if you listen yeah. to this during this. <laughs> it's, it's actually something worth mentioning, isn't it? Because you, you, you know, like I was on my Steam Deck this week during yeah. the heat wave, and I'm like, I got to turn this off. I'm scared about it frying. Like, it, yeah. I, was, I was playing Elden Ring, right? So it's quite intense. Intense. And yeah. I was like, right off. Um, so the, 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 I, I can add something to this, though, actually. Um, uh, they recently had um, an investor meeting as well, and they get asked all these questions by people and so on. Um, and one of the questions they did get asked that kind of relates was, you know, if something else happens on a global scale, how can you, what co what confidence can you give us to keep investing that everything would be okay? And they went to detail of, actually, if there is another um, global outbreak of some sort, if there is an earthquake, if there is a major world event, we have now official processes in place that we will follow and we can ensure that Nintendo will remain unaffected um, if these things go down because we've set up contingencies in X, Y, and Z places that, you know, uh, we've uploaded data to points yeah. A, B, and C and everyone can access and blah, blah, blah. Um, 
very interesting. Very interesting, interesting to know that I they mean, have tackled that so quickly as I'm well. I'd like to add this as well. No one was injured in this fire. No one was, and, apart from an electrical device, I guess. Exactly, but, uh, which is fantastic yeah. for them, because if anyone starts saying, oh, where's any Donkey Kong? They can just go, lost in the fire. Sorry, mate. I'd love it if all the fire, fire extinguishers in Nintendo headquarters looked like the flood from Mario Sunshine. <laughs> Well, that'd, be, that'd be so cool. That would be amazing. You, you'd want to be the person's part of the fire exactly. then, wouldn't you? Oh, like no, strapped on the flood. Fire. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Good luck. Maybe that's maybe that's some of the stuff that they put into place now. Everyone's gonna be equipped with a flood device. Uh, I thought I'd give something back. That's All great. Right. That's great. I want one of those. So <laughs> what else have we got going on in the game of news? Something happened. Go on. That's no, it. Something happened. That's the news. No, no, but something did happen. So THQ. Yeah. Um THQ Nordic, I should say. Um, they recently had a, a digital event where they showcased some of their new upcoming titles. Yeah. Um, and something, there was a lot of interesting stuff in there, but something made a comeback. Uh, and that is Alone in the Dark. And that name alone excites me. Um, and I just wanted to, uh, what do, what have you heard? What have you heard about this? Because I, I didn't get to watch the presentation well, right myself here. yet. Right. Yet. It uh, will happen. Uh, what have I heard? Well, it's a remake, right? It's a remake of the of the original Alone in the Dark, but yeah. for a modern well, age. Well, it's a reimagining. Re reimagining. That's, that's, that's yeah. the official words in the yeah. in the press release. We'll find which makes about sense PR. because it, technology has come so far that if it was a direct remake, I think it'd feel a bit, exactly. you know. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. it's so. I guess we should start at the beginning for those that don't know what Alone in the Dark is or why they should care. And again, I'm I'm a bit of a, I you know I like to bring up Silent Hill once a week and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the reason that I do that is to keep it alive because people might not know what Silent Hill is because there hasn't been a good one in about 20 years and there hasn't been any of them for about 15. It's been and a while. Alone in the Dark is in a similar position where, you know, the last, I think the last Alone in the Dark, Illumination, its Metacritic score is about 16, 1-6%. I'm sorry, was it called Illumination? Al Alone in the Dark, Illumination, yeah. Wait, what, what was that one? 20, 2015 that was uh, 2015 yeah yeah it's yeah. like the one where you could, where the whole thing the the thing they were very amazed by was you could set it was how things could set on fire no it was it, actually I thought of that when we were talking about the Nintendo story because I thought that's a horrible segue but the, like the 2008 <laughs> Alone in the Dark on the 360 that's, I didn't know there was a, another one after no, that there, there was another one and it was like panned by everybody. It was like, like a, yeah, it just did not do very well at all. It was a third-person shooter, and it came out just on PC. And Atari, Atari what? published it. Sounds like I'm lying now, doesn't it? I'm just going, yeah, and actually, um, yeah, and Jason Statham wrote it. That's a lie, by the way. That's a lie, right? I, that's a lie. <laughs> yeah. I, I, was, I, I, was, I was believing you then. I was like, no, the so story's gone Atari far enough. Atari published like... it. And sorry yeah. to anyone from Atari listening to this, it, but it was panned. And anyway, um. The point is that the Alone in the Dark's name was... The, so THQ were like, fuck that. And then they bought it because Embracer Group, who owned THQ Nordic, yep. just buy everyone all the time, right? So they bought it and they were like, we've got to do something about it. So I don't think they said that. That's paraphrasing. And uh, <laughs> they announced that there's a reimagining of the original. So let's go all the way back. 1992, the original. Yep. So 1992, it's funny, actually, because if I describe this game to you, you might think I'm talking about another game. Two uh, characters in a giant mansion. You can pick between the the male and the female character. If you're a female character, you've got a gun. If you're a man, you've got a knife. You've got a solver mystery. There's a secret lab. It's a 3D survival horror game. Resident that Evil. Na that's 1992's Alone in the Dark. And actually, it's the originator of the survival horror genre in 3D. And it strongly influenced Shinji Mikami's Resident Evil. Yeah. What? Yeah. Did you know that, by the way? What? No. Did you really not? No. Yeah, the OG. I, I, the thought, I thought it was after. No, 1992. No, it was 3D. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, and it's like excited, isn't it? Because, um, yeah. So uh, it's uh, a long, long time ago. Tank, there's, there's like fixed camera, tank controls, everything. Honestly, yeah. Oh, my. Wow. Wow. Yeah. You, you, you have bought me news. Stolen from your brain. So, so honestly, so so wow. the OG, so the OG Alone in the Dark is that classic thing, and so this is a, a reimagining of the original original uh, with uh, you know the you know the, the PR says that the characters are returning as well, Edward Carnby and Emily Hartwood, and uh, yeah, they're they're exploring a spooky mansion. So it's 
And then the weird thing about this is, it looks like it's been inspired by Resident Evil 2 Remake. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which yeah, is yeah, kind yeah. of you know yeah. um so which yeah everyone loved which everyone loved which it did so, so you know yeah. like i I'm, i was a big fan of the original alone in the dark i was one years old when it came out so i played it posthumously and i actually found it from um, posthumously it's yeah 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 it doesn't that mean after you die yeah i did a fear because i played silent <laughs> hill 2 <laughs> uh, no, so, so yeah so, so what um what happened was uh Silent Hill came out. I was like, "What? What the hell is survival horror? I need to. I need more." So I played every yeah. Resident Evil, every Silent Hill, and then it. Everyone said, "Oh, Alone in the Dark was the original," and I was like, "Yeah, but is it really, or is it kind of like Bob yeah. Dylan invented rapping in subterranean yeah, yeah, yeah. blues, you know, whatever?" So, uh, <laughs> so um, I checked it out. Yeah, and I've played. Um, okay, can I just tell you that the the sequel to Alone in the Dark is called, and you'll like this. Um, it's called Jack in the Dark. Which, uh, yeah, I, a, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I just wanted to let you know that. I um, feel like sit? there is so much about this series. I, this is a series that I thought I was relatively on yeah. board with and knew, but this is yeah. uh, this is throwing up everything. Jack for me. in the like, Dark sounds like an HR complaint. Alone yeah. in the Dark. Jack uh, in the Dark. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then they made Alone in the Dark two, and then three, and then four, and then it was uh, they did a remake of it, kind of like a reimagining again in in two thousand and eight. So yeah. anyway. But that was considered a big, a big step away because uh, you probably played that one, right? Aaron, like the, the 360 one, or you certainly yeah. remember it. So that was completely different. Like you're playing as a detective and like you were in this huge environment, like you were in a giant park and in a city yeah. and there was loads of action scenes, but there was that original intimacy. So yeah, this is, is kind of back back to basics there, I say. Yeah. Um, uh, I think it makes sense. I think it makes sense as well. I mean, um, there are probably so many people now that don't have the capacity to go back and, and play no. the original. Yeah. Um, and and even then, it's it's from an, its own era, right? So I, I think bringing refreshing that, reimagining that, mm -hmm. um, is a good way to get people on board and. I, I'm, I'm here for it. I think you, there are so many people because you have to remember as well, there's that weird period of time where survival horror kind of like just tanked. It just went completely off the radar and yeah. it wasn't a thing anymore um, because other, you know, everything became a bit more action-y and, and so on. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think, I, I, I think it's nice. I think, I, I think I'm, I'm quite interested to see more. Yeah, ex ex exactly. It's, for me, I'm, I'm finding that a lot of horror games become a bit of a... I don't want to say like a hide and seek simulator, but they they kind of take the the survival element to just literally be in avoiding enemies. So you have got the like yeah. like amnesia and outlast, where you're pretty much powerless towards the enemies. Whereas for me, the the big the big scare, the big the big um the big fear for me in these <clears> games is I have the capacity to kill the enemies with like the bullets in Resident Evil, but I've got limited ammo. Yeah, like that that resource management is is what for me freaks me out personally. I, I I I'm right there with you because I, I think this is the biggest challenge that survival horror games have right now, uh, in my, in my opinion anyway. Like, um, let's take um, Alien Isolation, right? Right. Game looks incredible. It looked incredible when it was released. You know, yeah. to have the recreation of, of, of the ship and so on, looking so good was incredible. Yeah. And then the premise of having that AI driven alien stalking you. And it can pop out at any point. Yeah, uh, is also great. The biggest problem with that, um, and I think for a lot of survival horror, um, at least where, like you said, the hide and seek type things, is the moment you die, the illusion is shattered. The illusion is shattered, and then it becomes annoying. <laughs> it becomes annoying um, because yeah. you're like, ah, oh, you, you get thrown back to an earlier checkpoint. You're like, I've got to do this again, and it's not you're, scary now. You're quite right, and and that that randomness of like when the alien will appear, or in the Resident Evil Two remakes, they introduced uh, Mr. X. Mr. X. Yeah. But but it becomes you know you don't want the players to feel like oh this is unfair. Sometimes you know he, he'll spawn in a corridor where yeah. You know, and and then you don't want people to feel like that, do you? So, so you're right. There's like a lot to balance of it, isn't there, and, and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, having having this new one in the dark announcement looking like it's got that camera angle of like Resi two and and three, the remix yeah. that happened recently, and with Capcom's announcement of the Resident Evil four, four? Remake, which yeah. is on the horizon. Um, yeah, it's all very exciting. So for survival horror fans, like, like even even you, Aaron, like you know, you're you're a, a 
a very knowledgeable man. And for you to not know the alone and the dark was the original, doesn't even means that yeah, it's it's got that. And, and in a way, it's a bit bit nice for that because it's like it doesn't have much to prove because a lot of people don't yeah. know how, the the importance of it back in the day. But um, yeah, and I, I, to be honest, I don't even know where you can you can go and bloody play that now. It was on it was on the App Store like on I, iOS ages ago. Okay, it, that that's actually how I played. I played it on iPad, believe it or not. Yeah. Um, when iPads were like new, <laughs> and <laughs> and it was like one of the like, the games that got added. Um. I think that might be something to do with like that Atari thing, but yeah. So alone in the dark, that's it. Then now give give us Silent Hill. World, yes, you prick. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah it's, sorry, nothing was announced for Silent Hill in the end, was it? No, there was nothing. Another, yeah. uh, those another three dry, announcements that we season. that were. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have to put mm. something in a Wicker Man. Yeah. Mm. All right. Well, there we are. Oh wait, actually, I don't know if this is just hot in. Did Capcom? recently announced that they are going to be doing a showcase in September. Am I misspeaking? When you say Capcom, do you mean Konami? Like, is that, is oh, that... Konami. Yeah. Oh, I could be... Let's strike that from the record. Let's not go, let's not go into that. I can't, I can't... I have not stole that from the internet. I think I stole it from my dreams. Okay. Um, uh, so... uh, okay. Well, I did say... I would, I, let's just as a sort of um, eulogy for all things that I, I'd like to mention that this week marks the eight-year anniversary... May it rest in peace of the greatest horror experience ever, apart from Bloodborne. PT. <laughs> PT. PT. Yes. Which, which, and Gamera del Toro, big bad boy Oscar winning director. Recurring name in this episode. <laughs> yeah, del Toro. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. A destroyer of the Hobbit uh, tweeted uh, a coded fuck Konami as well. <laughs> I did not see that. He I did not see he that. He tweeted F dot 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 K dot 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 whatever. Um, retweeting Hideo Kojima's eight years today. Yeah. Oh, PT, we loved you so. Much. It's a, that's a weird one, right? Because I think um, yeah, everyone looks at PT and the situation. And let's be honest, PT was great. It was a great playable teaser. Um, but I, I don't think they probably feel the frustration of like Norman Reedus, Del Toro, and Kojima as well. Because let's you know, they were both involved in Death Stranding eventually, but. For PT as well, the amount of work that would have already gone into that, because I don't think, I think people say, oh yeah, a demo has been released, but the amount of project work that would have gone into that, but even just on the technology side, like with the engine that they had made and stuff, you know, Crazy. to have all of that, then just be like, sorry, no, um, you know, I'm going to tie you to your desk and you can't say that you love uh, any other company, blah, blah, blah. It's I... shit love video games and i love talking to you on this podcast because you know what you're on about and it's amazing to hear you talk about this and go someone gets it as much as me so for those listening i hope that you're also going oh my god yeah you know there's certain things in life that people get sad about you know like kurt cobain dying before his time what music we could have we got we're never gonna know are we we're never gonna know what that junji ito gamera del toro and bloody kojima Santa Hills is gonna look like but hey yeah. Kojima, Kojima says he's working on a horror game, doesn't he? So maybe we're gonna know. Not gonna have that same ring to it. So there we go. That's uh, that's the uh, Alone in the Dark uh, manifestation complete. There it is. Uh, survival horror fans, Alone in the Dark is back. Question mark? Question mark? More information soon. I'm I'm assuming. Um, what else have we got? We got something just as dark and evil next. No. Oh, well, it depends what you think of the company, I guess. <laughs> it's related to Disney and Marvel. Uh, <laughs> I see what you did there. Oh, it's there. right there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so, interestingly, so um, in September, um, the yearly Disney, well, it used to be just Disney, but now it's Disney and Marvel conference, a whole show just for Disney and Marvel where they make like new film announcements, show trailers and things. Um, that's coming up in September. Um, and for this year, they've announced that there's a whole gaming showcase for the show as well, which is quite cool. Um, and uh, th there's some interesting bits about this. So, you know, Amy Hennig um, is set now, yeah. to show mm. um, the newly announced Marvel game that she's working on with, with her studio, um, which is meant to be an ensemble game. So I guess you can say, is it a... a a new, better um, Avengers time game. 
game. So, uh, or for the for the youngsters slash you know more casual audience, Amy Hennig, of course, um, being a prolific video game writer and video game director, one yes. of the, the the biggest women in the whole damn industry, may I just say? Uh, yeah. She uh, I a think, legend. Yeah, I mean, she worked on something that I bring up again on this podcast quite a lot. On one of my favorite series ever, Legacy of Kane. She only went and did Bloody <sighs> Soul Reaver, Man. didn't she? And then she Soul Reaver, Blood Omen. I I would I I, I, I need a new one. I, I, I think I think we're overdue on let's say that. Yeah. And uh, she worked on these other small games called Uncharted. Wrote I've heard of that. It was a movie. It was a movie, one. right? Yeah, it's based on the yeah, Tom Holland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, so yeah. So sorry to digress there, but just to make sure everyone understands how big a deal it is that, that the person who made Uncharted basically, well, one of the the key people, is is unveiling something there. So that's that's like the big gun basically that they're showing. Right? I, I I could be I could be a little off on this. Wasn't Amy Hennig originally attached to a Star Wars game with she, EA? Uh, she no, she was. I I think she um was part of that big. Oh, what was it called? Visceral, Visceral Games. Visceral. The one, okay. the, the one that like because it became a little bit of a meme online. Don't really like to bring up negative stories here, but we'll do it anyway. It, it's like a bit of a meme because. EA, they had this really big single player Star Wars game. It was like a bit too big, so they cancelled it. And then I think famously, like one of the product guys at EA said, no one plays single player games anymore. And that's mm. haunted them then for years because now everyone says it. And then of yeah. course they went on to do that Jedi Fallen Order or whatever it was called. Jedi Fallen Order, game. Yeah. And that did well. And if you ever want to know why these comments are like, oh, EA said people don't like single player games, it's because of this really like incredibly um it was like an all-star cast of developers were working on this game for, yeah. for ea and amy hennig was was leading the charge on that so yeah good yeah so that that, that that's an interesting stage to be on for for her <laughs> it's like here's what you could have won star wars yeah ab- um... absolutely yeah make the ex jealous yeah okay no, but there's um there's some other interesting things in this so i i, I do want to i do want to hear about what do you think this game could potentially be? But there's some other tidbits that they've teased in this. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, they're going to show new content from uh, Disney and Pixar games, uh, Marvel games, Lucasfilm games, and 20th Century games. No EA. No EA in there. Um, <clears throat> okay. Including all new announcements, and fans can expect new reveals from titles, including Disney Dreamlight Valley, which, it, which you know, for it looks nice. It, it looks nice. It looks cool, that, yeah. Yeah, um, Marvel's Midnight Suns, which was recently delayed, but that is uh, that is from uh, the team that made XCOM Two, um, and they're doing their own take on it, which um, looks incredible. I, the, I, I I worked on XCOM Two with that team, and they're incredible. And there was a One time of the best games ever made XCOM Two. Yeah, we we were we were doing an event, and um, I forget where we were. I think we were in Birmingham for some reason, and uh, you know I got told about this <laughs> like what the dream was for this so to see it actually be happening i'm like i'm so happy for jake other jake um because <laughs> um, it's gonna be good. and and for you it's gonna be great it's gonna be so good um here, here's the thing that i find interesting though there's yeah. gonna be new reveals uh and one of those games that are included is lego star wars the skywalker saga huh yeah how how what what the hell could that be how do you do new content for that outside of hey here is you know Palpatine from his prequel era? Yeah, it's got to be yeah. like skins, right? But it, but it seems a bit weird to put that much because that's a standout. I that's see a standout what you're game saying. So, in the, so, so yeah. what you're saying is the fact that they've like put that in like that's like their hi- highlight reel, isn't it? They're, they're saying yeah. they're showing a couple of you know choice cuts, and they've put that as one of the choice cuts. And this is and by the way for anyone who's n- not quite. Uh, on board with what Aaron's saying here because, you know, you're not as up to date and as on the pulse as Aaron. The game came out in April, guys, yeah? This mm. is a game that came out months ago, Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, and that that uh, encompasses the entire of the Star Wars output. All nine films. All nine films. So, yeah. like, really, the only way I can see this being a bit more... I, do, do you know way I can see this being interesting? Is it... Hey, hear me out. A chunky, chunky bit of paid DLC... Going down either either the Clone Wars or the Mandalorian yeah. route, maybe everyone loves Obi Wan, you know. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So and, and everyone would want to play as Mando, right? So if that's yeah. so, so 
if they they're bringing in a wider universe into that now, because I then think that means the Clone Wars and Rebels would be grand. Yeah, ex- ex- Mad exactly. Batch and all that. If you, if you made it like a completely comprehensive Lego Star Wars package with everything in, and you're just doing these, fine. But if unless it's something of that caliber, why add it to your like? Whoa, yeah. and this is only a taste of what's to come. I know what you mean. It seems and, it seems unusual. Yeah. And then if if they go down the route of Mandalorian and Bad Batch and you know those things, would they then have to change the name of the game to be some other than the Skywalker Saga? Yeah, exactly. And, others, <laughs> and friends, Skywalker and friends, and like, friends. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's like uh, it, it's interesting, but but you know, um, uh, I'm not like a Disney adult. I'm a, I'm a Studio Ghibli kind of guy. I'm actually yeah. like fairly tepid towards this sort of stuff. Just watched Howl's Moving Castle last night. But, 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 yeah, I hey, Studio Ghibli got it, man. I, 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 had a, I had COVID last week, like I mentioned, and I, all I want to do when I'm ill is either watch The Lord of the Rings or like Studio Ghibli movies, man. That's yeah. all I, that's, or play Elden or, Ring. Or Elden Ring on your Steam Deck, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just to, to remind myself I'm alive. So, like, <laughs> the point is, though, whether you're big into Disney or not, they, they kind of do like a big show now. Like, they, they do the Star Wars Day. They they make it proper. They do uh, the big Disney days where they announce all of their roster. And they, they, they've got that Mickey Mouse money. they got a lot of money behind it. So I'm interested to see how a big company that's not traditionally a gaming company does a gaming event and shows out. Like, how much money are they putting behind this? Are they going to be paying for, like, sponsorships if they want any podcast sponsored? You can email us at unplugged.wireproductions.com. Uh, or, or, like, are they going to be paying <laughs> streamers to co-streamer? Like... How much do they need the games industry to care? How much do they want the games industry to care? Or how much of it's just like... It's weird though, right? Because... So, I think for Marvel and Disney, the movie industry is their biggest thing, right? However, the games industry is bigger than the movie industry. (laughs) Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. So, you know, they're they're going from the biggest fish in a small pond to whatever. I I also just want to just point out a, a big WTF because this is news to me and I actually read this out just moments ago. Yeah. 20th century games. 20th century Fox games. When know. has that been a thing? Well, what, what's on 20th century Fox? Well, I, I mean, 20th century used to be... Uh, they, they used to do um, Star Wars, I guess, right? I, all I think about uh, is like, you know, when you think the... Like, I, I just think of the Simpsons. like That's at the end of that, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. All right, look what they got. I'm just looking at now. They got like Avatar. Oh, they're actually Avatar. I've just put in, yeah, I've just put in films and that to see what. Film. Yeah. Alien, obviously. Uh, yeah. But is there it's a Sega. Thing? That's a bit Sagery, right? Yeah, it's Creative Assembly that the Creative Assembly, Assembly, yeah. But they, you know they're owned by Sega, so yeah. Uh, but is there anyone on the way? Like I don't know. Um, I mean, I, I guess that there are there are some Avatar games coming, but. The the weird thing here is that the I think the main Avatar game is Ubisoft, um, which that's been slightly delayed to next year, right? Yeah. And then there's an Avatar mobile game. I think is happening as well. Right. Um, yeah. No. I'm 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 looking at what uh, hmm. I'm looking at what games they've done. They have they have, they have been around for a while, but they've been putting out like um, Lego D- Avatar DS games that's and that. My prediction. That, Ice Age, Dawn of the Dinosaurs, they put out and stuff like that. I mean, so oh okay. So they, okay. they they put out a couple of Game Boy. They put out a Wolverine game on the Game Boy Advance. So okay, yeah, maybe get that. Give that a PS Five port. Um, yeah, <laughs> no, but but jokes aside, like it's it's incredibly interesting and like you know it feels like you know Wired are like a, an indie publisher who uh, couldn't be any further away from from this so like this is why like it's really interesting for everybody like no matter if you like work in the games industry you're a consumer you work in publishing you know mm. everyone's going to want to see what 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 are the big one of the biggest companies in media going to do for a game showcase everyone's going to be watching aren't they so yeah, yeah interesting that you've you brought that up ahead of time so we can build up to this and it can be uh, Jake and Aaron's big night out, and we'll report back on the podcast and let you know what we thought of it. This is a- live from Gamescom. <laughs> live from Gamescom. <laughs> oh no, no, sorry, this isn't September. No, it's after. It's after. after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but we are going to be live at Gamescom, and I guess yeah. it's before we um, 
I, I guess I guess at Gamescom we can roam the hall, see what we can sneak into behind closed doors, and get the scoop on all of this. Maybe yeah, you never exactly. know. Maybe you'll get an Ice Age: Dawn of the Dinosaurs remake. Disney lawyers just watching this, being like, yeah. seriously, yeah, they can't we, come. yeah, we are we are joking, guys. <laughs> so first of all, like, um, you might have wondered, uh, oh, especially, oh, oh, I felt a bit of a weird moment. I didn't realize. Like, have we let everybody know, especially the audio listeners who have got no visual aid? I hope you guys realize Gabrielle's actually been gone for like 20 minutes. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, she's um, had lots of internet problems, but that's okay because I'm going to fix that by now getting Curtis, our wonderful benevolent video editor, to cut to an interview segment that I've recorded tomorrow. That's weird, promising you something I haven't done yet. Um, and we will learn all about PR. Um, yeah, and by, the, has... by the time people find this out, you would have already done it. So tomorrow would be several days ago for them. Dead mad, all this. Like me and the amount of times that me and Aaron are recording this podcast and we're talking about something with utter confidence, knowing full well it's not been publicly released. <laughs> this is episode fifteen. No, no, absolutely. No. <laughs> so, but I've got to say, this is this is the best news haul in ages. That was good. That there was a fire. That's nobody was hurt. There was a. You learned something about survival horror. Wet a workshop is the best, and Disney. Come on, that's a really Lord good and one. the King. It's been amazing. Coming so, soon. Let's 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 go and see what Gabrielle's up to one day later. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna mention that, and then we'll be back. Wired unplugged. Whoa! Well, here we are in the the interview segment of this podcast. Uh, as promised, one day later, uh, as you can see, Gabrielle has transcended now into a well lit loft room. Welcome back, Gabriel. What did we learn from the Shadow Realm? Anything exciting? Any takeaways? The games comes next week. That's a really big thing. A absolutely. absolutely. So I guess we should preface this little interview segment by saying, unfortunately, the internet curse hasn't quite been lifted. The demons haven't been exercised entirely. So we're battling through. And I think we've got a fighting chance, don't you? I'm just cursed, but trying to rock it best we can. Well... That's honestly, you you know, it's copy and paste, you know, what you missed, really. Aaron spoke about Nintendo. I cried that Silent Hill hasn't been announced. It's just the same as it is most weeks, to be completely honest. <laughs> but now it's, you know, now we can just focus almost entirely on you. You can give some expertise in a more focused way. So probably a better thing, um, unless the internet kills our dreams again. But let's not think about that. So, Gabrielle, you, you have been um, brought on a podcast as an interview guest uh because of your your well your time in the games industry is pretty storied at this point you do pr and uh i normally when i sit down and speak to people i just pretend that i don't know a thing or two about what they do i also work in pr so i'm gonna just pretend i don't have a clue and ask you a couple of questions but i do know you've got a pretty juicy like how did you meet wired story and then we'll talk about these uh these video games at, at some point um so i guess you know, we'll, we'll, why don't we pretend, I think what might be nice is I pretend that I've never met you before and we do the, remember we did that intro yesterday, we'll just do that again in the interview segment. Um, Gabrielle, for the people at home, um, who are you and what do you do? Oh, hello. <laughs> um, so hi, Gabrielle. I do PR uh -huh. for video games, which to me basically means being a massive cheerleader for amazing projects and just having a great time talking about how fun and interesting and just impressive they are. And how long it's, have you yeah, been in the, the games industry? So formally, I think I've been doing PR for about three and a half years, but to be honest, like my, um, my sort of trying to get in lasts a little bit longer than that. So I, so my husband uh, used to work at Wired Productions and mm -hmm. I was literally like, hey, you're going to these events, can I come? Um, and uh, like, apparently that's not a normal thing, but I was like, no, 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 I want to come along. Let me, come, let me, you know, have you got, can I, can I yeah. come? So I would get in and rather than just like go away and do my own thing, I'd like hang out with the team, you know, like get to know what they were working on. Cause I just thought like, yeah, I just like to chat. Um, and there was one event in particular that I literally just hung out all day, singing and dancing, just pratting about. And I was like, wow, this is so much fun. 
I want to get in on this. This is too good to to not be part of. So um, I I badgered Gareth Williams, who was doing Wired's PR at the time. And do you know what? He didn't take me on at first. Not that I'm offended, but he didn't. It took him a while to see the light. But yeah. eventually, um, <laughs> eventually yeah. he did. Um, and then, yeah, the rest is uh, that joined Little Big PR and the rest is history. So it's it, it's quite a wired connected universe story, really, isn't it? Um, I think. Yeah, very, um, very entrenched in our area. Yeah, no, it's it's interesting. I, I ask people a lot how they met Wired and there's... I'm trying to think, like, what the checklist is. There's stories that involve cockroaches, um, Mario Kart, and yours involves singing... I, I, exactly, yeah. If you're interested, you can go back and watch your episodes. I'm not going to tell you now. Um, but uh, your story involves uh, <laughs> singing and dancing. That's really interesting. Can you remember what the like what the game was or anything like that or what the event was by any chance? Yeah, so I think it was, I mean, I'd already met them before, but the event in particular, I think, was Upload at the Tobacco Docks, yeah. and it was to promote We Sing, so there was like a karaoke booth, and I was literally just like convincing people to go get in it all day, or like, bless some like people on their own, I'd go in there with them, <laughs> just so they could have a go. Yeah. yeah, it was great. So when you said cheerleader, you really did mean it, that's that's really interesting. And Oh, I mean that literally, yeah, yeah, that's why I'm, I'm going to Gamescom, just to do it all again. Well... Gamescom is uh, going to be a little bit bigger than uploading Tobacco Dock, and that's uh, kind of testament to how far you've come, I suppose, really. <laughs> so, that, so, that, so you know, that's a little bit about how you started. But what about where you are, Alan? So, so, so what's your job role, and um, what sort of things are you at liberty to discuss about, you know, what it is that you, you, you've worked on recently? So we've got a little bit of a okay. before and a... Not an after, but before and now, you know what I mean? Before and now. So... Yeah, it's, it's come fairly full circle at the moment because uh, I currently do PR for Wired Productions. So I'm actually going to Gamescom okay. to rep their five games they're taking um, to uh -huh. talk to press about. So it's 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 come full proper circle. That really that really has come. So, so yeah, so it's before, after, uh, before again, the worm Ouroboros, the Alpha and Amiga. Wired centric this is. Wow. Ouroboros, that is a word. Yeah, it's uh, some old, like, fiction or something. I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I think it's like some old, like, I think it even predates the, uh, the Lord of the Rings, which we spoke about a little bit earlier on the podcast. I think the worm Ouroboros is widely considered, like, the first bit of, like, high fantasy writing ever. It predates even um, the Conan stories. So they are. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know where that came from or or whatever, but <laughs> bit off the rails, admittedly. Uh, let's let's stick to video games. To be honest, uh, Gabrielle, like it must be amazing. I act like I don't do it, but it must be amazing to work in video game PR because you get to work with video games. And I want to know kind of uh, what your story is with video games. Like, um, I normally ask people like, what's the first game that they remember playing? Because you know sometimes you've probably got some hazy memory of playing a game at someone's house or whatever. Can you remember like the first time that you had a significant memory with a video game, you know, where maybe it clicked like, and you were like, whoa, this is actually like really fun and whatever. Oh, I mean, I can remember enjoying video games from quite young, but I can remember sitting in the back of the car, sharing a Game Boy with my brother with Pokemon Yellow in it. And I was taking turns trying to catch Pidgeys like in the, like on route two, like yeah. from, uh, not really knowing what we're doing let's just just walk it about hoping for the best um and there are sort of various memories like that along the way like with the snares or with you know, ps2 gamecube but actually i think the memory that sort of makes me think okay yeah i, I really liked them this was like this was written in the stars <laughs> <laughs> That's so lame. Uh, was <laughs> um, I can remember saving up my pocket money um, to buy Pokemon Sapphire, and I was yeah. being away on like holiday. <gasps> yeah, being away on holiday, and my brother and I went into like a WH Smith, and I had I had just saved enough to get it. So I, because I was the first, I got to pick which one I wanted. And I can remember him like. You know, he and I having a really serious chat as like 10 year olds being like, right, you have 
this one and I'll have the other one but ultimately it was my decision and I got to choose so it was quite a responsibility yeah it was like the best thing ever I was like stop being on holiday like I've got Pokemon Sapphire now and then I think my mum feeling a bit guilty because my brother was one week behind she went back and got him Ruby and sort of said he could have a, a week a week's pocket money in advance so that we could have it at the same time but yeah, I remember that being a real like oh my I've saved all my pocket money like I don't know how much I've got but you know I've saved it for like 10 weeks and I finally got this game and I bloody love that game that's my favorite of the Pokemon wow. series that like, bloody love it interesting how that is yeah. and this isn't some Pokemon wordplay but that is like a natural evolution of you two in the back of the car catching Pidgeys is you make and I mean your brother learning some important things about um, financial management there as well uh, with the cash advance of his pocket money, but um, I, uh, fun funnily enough, actually the last, like the last Pokemon game that I really, really got into was Pokemon Ruby, and I was on holiday in like Black Rock Sands somewhere in in, in Wales, and uh, I I brought my Game Boy Advance and I got Ruby like two days before we went, and I remember we were on a beach holiday and I asked my dad if we could bring like this like sun tent sort of thing, and I spent the entire time in the sun tent. I always remember this because this was like quite a bit. It, it's either pathetic or amazing, depending on how, how you slice this. The sun tent had such nice shade that I had to use the, the, the Game Boy Advance's worm light to illuminate the screen to play my game, despite the fact that I was on a really sunny beach in the middle of the day. So I remember being in some sort of like dank tent, like enjoying a bit of Pokemon Ruby. That was my experience with um, the Ruby and Sapphire generation. So I like that I can connect with you on that holiday <laughs> Pokemon story. <laughs> and, uh, like, so but all that, you know, beach stuff, we want the Pokemon. Exactly, exactly. Pokemon, uh, and, it, and it's still going strong. I think uh, sort of by the time this, this podcast goes out live, the Pokemon World Championship competitive Pokemon thing is in the UK for the first time in, in London isn't it so uh yeah it's it's a very pokemon heavy week actually and me and aaron covered the um the pokemon direct I, just a few weeks ago so that's a really nice first memory um and there's all sorts of of games in between i guess but it's always nice to ask people um because get you know especially people who work in the games industry one thing i love is how people still have the passion for it. You know, you do find the occasional person who's maybe a bit disillusioned or whatever, but you don't strike me as the type, Gabrielle. So can you remember the last game that you played and, and um, really enjoyed? And I know that you work in PR, but you're not allowed to say Arcade Paradise, okay? It's just too cheesy. And when you strike, I'm enjoying it, but... Um... <laughs> it is good, by the way. <laughs> <sighs> It's race hard, and do you know, right? I know we can't. I know I shouldn't say it, but the, do you know why I like it so much? It's because I'm playing the arcade machines in the game, and I can feel myself getting better at them. Because I'm someone who I I like. I think video games are amazing. I bloody love them, but I'm terrible. I'm, and I get really embarrassed at being bad at things because I can't stand it. I have to be good, or I tend to quit. So, um, so I, you know, haven't spent as much time on sort of the the probably the classics as other people because I like if I'm not good, I'm just I can't do it. But actually playing Arcade Paradise, I get to play these games. I'm like, oh my god, I'm getting better at them. Maybe one day I'll be able to like play in front of another person and not die inside because I'm that bad. Um. So, but you know, I can't say Arcade Paradise, so we'll just shimmy as uh -huh. if I didn't say yeah, any I of that. Um, no, not at all. Um, let me think. Oh my god, it's quite It hard. is difficult, isn't it? Because I put you on the spot a little bit. Um, I've tried to open it up to literally any game, but it is even then. It's just like saying, name a good film. You know what I mean? Oh my god, no. yeah. And I'm, I'm like quite an indecisive person, so um, mm -hmm. it's really hard to pick. But another one I really enjoyed. Oh my god! And this is the moment where I'm like, I can remember it. What's it? What, do you know what? Right? No one's going to agree with me, and that's fine. I don't mind. I really enjoy playing Watch Dogs, which what is a you? bit. It's not. It's not yeah. so recent yet, but it's so in our house. I often end up watching um, gameplay as opposed to actually. Play playing myself because we have the one tv and as i say I, I can't bear being rubbish so i don't like playing where other people can see but watchdog was one i actually did play myself yeah. and i really enjoyed it and i was like was that, just, the, was that like yeah. the um the original kind of watchdogs from like the ps4 like era or or is it like the the latest iteration the big london -y it one was. 
No, it was actually like the oh, the yeah. first one, and um, I know I was really I was really late to it. But the thing is, so Watch Dogs came out while I was doing a bit of um, writing in video games. So I used so I spent one summer writing articles for a website that doesn't exist anymore, yeah. and it was during that time. Like it was, you know, I'd sort of drive into this office with my you know this old but new to me car you know they play radio <laughs> one and i thought that was really cool because i only love to listen to heart and magic um and yeah and it was during that time that watchdogs came out so i ended up writing a fair bit about watchdogs and so i was like wow this is so cool and i, I then went back to my degree and you know life happened and then i came back to the industry obviously later on so um so yeah to play watchdogs i was like oh my god this is from that sort of time of my life where i felt like i was sort of a toe a toe in the industry but not really in it but still enough to be like oh my god so yeah, it just reminds me of uh that exciting yeah. time so playing it now it was just like it is really cool to play and i'm really enjoying it and not worrying about you know anything and just playing it for the sake That's of enjoying really nice, it so um, you know uh, mentality to yeah. subscribe to i think that you know the only sort of major downside of being an avid uh gamer is the fact that like you're quite driven by like fomo and stuff like that and it it doesn't really pay to be patient um in in some people's minds but it really does because like you know these days like so many games are getting put on like really heavy sales after just like um you know a few months and they can be like 40 percent off and stuff but I think another thing with like watchdogs and games like that is that like they're like open world games, aren't they? And there was so many of them released in a big bunch. There always is, isn't there? There's always an Assassin's Creed or a Days Gone. And what I find quite interesting is so many people go back to some of the the old ones um, with like a fresh perspective and say, "Oh, actually, this game was really good." But at the time, there was like this kind of fatigue, isn't there? So like that that game Days Gone or whatever. Um, loads of people say, "Actually, you know what?" That's good. But I remember at the time people being like, it's just one of them. Duh, duh, duh. So Watch Dogs is an interesting one because I have a similar experience where I got it late, actually. Um, I think I bought a PS4 second hand and it, it came bundled with Watch Dogs. It was like a year after the PS4 came mm -hmm. or something like that. So I remember picking up, there was no hype around it. There was no opinions about it. So I had the solace of playing a video game with only my own opinions, uh, you know, <laughs> and uh, I enjoyed it too. So, um, and you know you're a, you're an industry professional uh, and a busy one at that. So, what's the sort of what advice would you give to busy people about finding the time to play games? Like, what what challenges do you kind of face, like finding the time to sit down and play a game? So, and this is something I actually give a fair amount of thinking, like brain space to to try. Basically, like right, I'm trying to train myself to be like enjoy life like squeeze just do what you enjoy so for it was i got into a, a habit of in the evening crashing out watching tv and then i'd be like i'm not even enjoying what i'm watching this is so stupid like i've got this you know long list of games that i'd love to play and i don't have the time for but instead i'm sat here watching i don't get me wrong i watch good tv i watch enjoyable tv but do i enjoy is that how is that the best way i could spend my time and the answer i was finding was no actually i would enjoy spending it differently playing these games so for me it's just about recognizing how you are spending your time and actually is that really how you want to be spending it if not then change it so now i'm like right don't want to turn on tv i'm gonna even if i'm tired if i once i get going on a game on my switch i'm well away and i can play for the rest of the evening whereas yeah you can easily be like oh, i'm too tired to concentrate on a game so i'm just gonna slob and yeah, that's it. it's just for me, it's being self-aware and holding myself to account to be like, did you, ch how did you spend your time? Did you choose to spend it doing the things you enjoy most? Yeah, that's, I feel like you. that's a personal attack to me at the moment, because for some reason over the last two weeks, I've decided to just sort of cabbage in front of Netflix. And I've been watching reruns of shows I didn't even like the first time. And I watched loads of crap cooking show reality TV. So I, I, I'm, I'm watching Sugar Rush again. I don't even like Sugar Rush. I hate the the host of it. It's well annoying to me. I don't hate him. I'm sure he's like a at least <laughs> decent guy. He pisses me off a bit, and I'm still sitting there watching it when I, you know, 
What did help me though is this isn't like some sort of plug or whatever. It's just I think they're quite good. As you mentioned the Switch, I got a Steam Deck recently, mm -hmm. which obviously is it comes like you know attached with like oh. all of your games on your Steam library. My library's not that hench to be honest. I've only got like three hundred games, mm -hmm. which is pathetic compared to some people. But and then I just got Elden Ring on, so now I, now I'm hate watching Sugar Rush and playing Elden Ring. So I'm actually dual wielding. Mm -hmm. um, but d is is the Switch kind of the console that you choose to? to go to because you've got the, the screen there or or what yeah it's it's my go-to mostly because as i say i get a bit i i hate struggling and being rubbish like I'm, I'm a real like i like to be good at things and anything else is just not acceptable so the privacy of the switch being in hand held <laughs> means that i can fail in my own in my own way and i don't have the pressure of being like oh no al's gonna think i'm so bad or whatever um yeah. and just yeah, I think I'm, I don't know if it's I'm a perfectionist, but I try really hard. So when I try hard and I still can't do it, I get frustrated. So um, yeah, and it, it just it just follows the path, you know, of the games that I have taken to most. So like the Game Boy, the Game Boy Color, the Advance, the SP, the DS. Like I I'm just at home. Even the PSP. Oh my god, I love playing Assassin's Creed on the PSP. It was great. I know the PS. Oh my the god, Vita. no, it's the Vita. I had a Vita. Yeah bloody love playing with the vita i'm just at home on a handheld so although the switch can go on a tv and that's great i'm like just give me my switch light let me yeah. let me just play for myself i don't need to be on show for everyone else i just want to play for myself by myself and just however i enjoy it most whether that's just playing pokemon again or trying out a new game and being like ah I still suck at Portal, but I'm going to give it a go because I want to. I want yeah, to get nice. further. It's nice that so. you get to hear an advocate of handheld consoles. I don't think I've ever had this conversation on here before, but that's nice. And it's quite funny that you've got that kind of um, the video game death shame that's kind of driving you. You're like, I can, I can die in peace. Yeah. Uh, I uh, massively. Well, it's massively. just us here because it feels it's got you know, especially because I've kind of got this like light on me here. It's giving me kind of confessional boo vibes. I thought, if you don't mind, I'll share a confession with, with you that I've got, which people in my um, inner circle uh, insult me for a lot, right? But I feel like you're going to be an ally to this a little bit. Um, I play my Switch, right? But I have kids, yeah? And they're normally, like, watching, like, Ben and Holly or Peppa Pig or whatever on, on the telly, yeah? So I'm just trying to quietly just play my, my game on the sofa. And I have... So I don't ever dock my Switch. And I also... This is really odd. And I'm, I'm glad that I'm not saying this in front of Aaron. I have the sound down when I'm playing it. I don't think I've ever had the speakers on on my Switch ever. So I don't know what any of the Nintendo exclusive soundtracks are like. Like at all. Is that bad or what? Oh my God. Jake, you're speaking to someone who doesn't ever turn the sound up on their games because you know but like when you're on uh, when you're in a space yeah. you don't you don't want other people playing like their music on loud like everyone's like, oh get your headphones right yeah. and i never want to be that person call me considerate so yeah, i've cool. never gamed with the volume yeah. up i always keep it down Thank i do it in service. silence to the point where i'm like I went to the I went to watch like Pokemon in concert by the Philharmonic Orchestra, whatever they're called. Um, and obviously, like I know the music, but some of it I was a bit like, this is not this is not hitting me where it should do because I just don't play with the sound on. Like I know I know what this is from, but not because I have like deep rooted memories of listening to it. Repeatedly I feel like I hours. feel so validated and happy, but you know, like when you, 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 you're out drinking and you know that you're going to get a hangover in the morning. I know that there's hell to pay for us saying this. I know that everyone listening is going to be like, get a load of these two. And I, I especially know that as an avid music fan and we've had composers on here and the Nintendo stuff is widely considered some of the best in the world. We had, we had the composer on literally last episode Knowing that this is how how we're gonna go out in in a blaze of glory, Gabriel. I'm so glad that I've got you here for this one. That is, I can't lie. <laughs> I love that. So yeah, all right, Nintendo Switch mute gang. That is that is yeah. brilliant. Um, so but what's worse is like listening to music that like normal music on Spotify or whatever while playing a game. So I listen to some like that on a plane i'll listen to I music exactly but not video game same. music yeah. and I'm, I'm really sorry yeah. to like the devs and the composers and everyone who put so much time into it 
that's just not how I enjoy it. It's just not part of my experience. I love that you've said this because to me, uh, sometimes if it gets really stressful, I do that as a coping mechanism. So what I'm on about is that like uh, Bloodborne, I get I got sick of dying so many times and I was like, I'm just overthinking it. So I'm going to like turn my brain off. So I just put like some sort of podcast on. So I just had the visual cues and it gave me some sort of like, I was like Neo in the Matrix. I could see the code then, you know? So, oh, I love this. Okay, good. Right, Gary, I'll thank you very much for, <laughs> for like reaffirming so many of my life choices. This has been great for me. Um, but I, th I feel like if we leave this interview segment and then I go back to Aaron, a uh, Nintendo music enjoyer, um, that I feel like we, I would have shortchanged the audience a little bit. So I'd like to ask you um, a couple of things and we can give a bit of expertise to those at home. So um, I think arguably anyone listening to this um, podcast would have gone, wow, I like video games, but I, I can't compose music or wow, I can't code. Um, if people are interested in maybe working in something like video game PR, what type of things do you think would be like a useful skill set to have? And how would you get into that sort of thing? Apart from, of course, going to a convention, singing and dancing and being a cheerleader, which is like a really good tip that you've already given. And what would you say to anyone listening to this who might want to get into like video game PR? Sure. So um, I'll start off by saying lots of people have different styles. My style, you know, is just one. There are many others. And I say that because I think the what's core to my PR is that I'm a very sociable person. I'm very happy to be loud and to chat to people and just like I'm quite outspoken and can you know unless you're watching me play a video game I'm fairly confident mm. um and I know that that's not everyone's like forte some people are a bit more introvert and you know you sort of have a, a quieter voice and that's just not me um and I think for how I do PR that's really helpful that's really beneficial to me um in terms of like a tip which sounds feels so weird to say because it just does not who yeah who who am I to have the authority but um I feel like a lot of the industry is on Twitter and so if you're able to be sociable online and make connections because I got into this because I you know I knew someone I married someone at Wired and I was like right can I come can I come and talk to you and can I talk to you and you know and just putting myself out there um and obviously that's much easier to do online than in person so i just think yeah put yourself out there and just be friendly and warm open-minded um you know just yeah just be a be a cheerleader in spirit cheer on and then people will get drawn to that sort of positive energy um mm. and then seek out people who are doing what you want to be doing and ask them about how, you know, what they're doing, how do they do it? And I get properly in the nitty gritty, like, no, 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 but how do you do that? And how do you do that? And how do you do that? Um, but yeah, buddy up with people who are doing what you're doing and just ask me, you know, oh, do you need any extra, you know, do you need any help? Do you need a pair of hands? Like, and just keep knocking on the doors, elbows out, get, you know, just bar your way in is my recommendation. That's what I did. Gabrielle Hibbert, everybody. Woo! Uh, I'm so glad that she fixed those internet problems. And uh, we you hope. About... <laughs> yeah. Um, I uh, I hope you enjoyed what Gabrielle thought of the Lord of the Rings as well, now that we finally mm. asked her. So there we go. Aaron, it's been an absolute pleasure. It's been really good to have you back. And, it's nice. And uh, everybody listening, if you want to know something from Leo Zulu, like um, we already know what part of the cow he likes, all of it. All of it. What is his All favorite pasta dish, though? You don't know that just yet, do you? Uh, don't just ask him questions about being Italian. Don't know if that's like no. appropriate, really. So leave it out. But if you want to ask, do, you, can, do, do you know? Do you know? Do you know? Actually, I, I'll, I'll tell a story. If you want to bring up the Italian thing, he's fine because he is actually Italian, right? Yeah. Um, so much. But the really offensive thing that happened: we was at an event in Italy, right? And Leo was there, um, and Leo was ordering uh, from one of the 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 waiters that came over in Italian and the waiter stopped him and said, you don't have to talk Italian. It's easier if I talk English. <laughs> like, and Gabrielle was there. Gabrielle says it's topical. And Gabrielle said, you know, he is Italian. <laughs> what the hell? What, anyway, what anyway, the yeah. hell? ask him, ask him how he felt. Submit yeah. that question. Where have you hidden the body? 
Because yeah. I'd, I'd be livid if someone asked me. <laughs> Can you imagine the that? place had major grounds, so there's plenty of spaces <laughs> like to, hit my, hit my to off someone. Yeah, um, yeah. Honestly, uh, yeah. Feel free to ask a question to us, guys. You can email uh, unplugged at wideproductions.com or you can tweet wide p for pasta, pasta or politeness, um, which is what you should be if you're a waiter, by the way. <laughs> so yeah, uh, yeah. Don't be no tip for him. Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> Get um, in the sea. That was his tip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he got to live. All right. So yeah, uh, thank you, Gabrielle, and thank you, Aaron, for another absolute stormer of an episode. And we'll be back for episode 28 next week Goodbye, in Germany. Everybody. Bye. Wired unplugged.